Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from back in the mountains of Snowdonia. It's been a while. Um, I've come out today to just basically get out with the camera. It's been a good couple of weeks since I've done photography just for myself. I've been really busy with a lot of work and a lot of shoots and times like that are great but it does mean that times like this where I'm able to just come out with the camera to shoot what I want to shoot are few and far between. So in this video I want to talk about a particular topic and it's more of a quote that I came across recently that I want to deconstruct a little bit and it's all about photography skills, whether photography skills are practiced or purchased and you'll know if you are a viewer of YouTube as I'm sure you are if you're watching this video that there is tons and tons of content out there all about photography equipment, photography gear, what camera you should buy, what lenses you should buy and a lot of people can get really sort of bogged down in particular aspects of gear thinking that that is the key to getting great photos but is that actually the case does gear help and is the practice element of going out to do photography as I'm doing today is that more beneficial or is it kind of somewhere in between so we're going to talk about that today I'm going to take some photos I've not been here before this is Plengelionid which is just north of Betzakoid. It's a really nice little place, um, but it's all new to me. So photographically, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to find, but we're going to do a lap of the lake and I will share any photos that I take. So I fall into the gear trap just as much as anybody else. I am an avid watcher of YouTube and especially for my own sort of like photography education, I suppose, a lot of it came from watching videos. And I think it's only natural when you are watching videos from creators and photographers that you enjoy that you are undoubtedly gonna come across videos that talk about gear. And that can definitely become a problem then because you're inundated with all of this content that tells you that you need the latest and greatest and you know when you're just starting out we don't all have tons of money to invest in gear so it's really just understanding what is important now i am obviously doing photography professionally so i need a certain level of equipment to do the work that i do you know if you're doing client work and they want whether it's a certain resolution for video or if they want to you know blow up images for advertising purposes and you need therefore higher megapixels then of course there are just certain cameras that are going to do that better than others and typically those are the ones that are a little bit more expensive but there are still wedding photographers that are shooting with the 5d mark ii because it's a really old camera it's really inexpensive but they just love the colors of that camera and then it doesn't really matter about anything else that's just their priority so it's just assessing what your priority is if you enjoy gear then that's a perfectly valid reason to purchase gear but if you're more interested in the actual process of photography and you're just caring about that process and the results of that process then really how important is gear to get those results that you're happy with and i would argue that it's not necessarily important at all My love of photography didn't come from a love of gear. That is so far down the list of priorities for me. I grew up in North Wales, it's these mountains, it's this national park that made me fall in love with photography as a hobby because I would always be out on hikes and I started to become interested in shooting landscapes just because those were the things that were really kind of like captivating me at that time. I managed to get a second-hand Canon with a 50mm lens and that's pretty much all I had for a good year but just because I didn't have the best gear it didn't diminish the experience for me of being out 
in nature with the camera capturing these moments, capturing the lights, the landscape, these different places. And I loved editing and, you know, you can edit for a pretty inexpensive amount of money. You can get an Adobe photography plan for about £10 a month. So again, not a massive investment, but then I would just spend hours in Lightroom just manipulating photos and learning about editing and trying to recreate the edits of some of my favorite photographers. And you realize that you can get pretty good results even when the gulf in the equipment used is pretty vast. For me personally, it's always been process first. That definitely paramounts anything to do with gear and you know, pursuing the latest and greatest camera. Because I'm out as often as I can in the field with my camera, taking photos, going to new locations. Like today, you know, it's a sort of day off. It's been a bit of a spur of the moment. Get up in the morning, see what the weather's doing. And, you know, if the day is clear, then I'm happy to just get in the car and drive for an hour and just see where I end up. And because I'll bring my camera with me, it just means that I'm having opportunities all the time to practice photography. And it's that repetition and it's that consistency of going out as often as you can that is going to bring your skill level up to a point where the gear just doesn't really matter anymore because your skills on how to use that gear and how to get the best out of the gear is what's going to give you good results. So a word of advice, if you are traveling to Snowdonia, don't do it during half term because there were so many families having barbecues and people swimming and paddle boarding that it didn't really make for great video potential and certainly not great photographic potential. So I've had to cut the video a bit short and finish off these points about whether photography skills are practiced or purchased here in the office. So firstly, let's talk about where photography skills can be purchased and where they should be purchased. So firstly, it's not a problem buying gear if you need that gear to create the photos that you yourself want to create. If you're looking to shoot long exposures, then you need to buy things like ND filters, like these from Case. And you know, these don't necessarily need to be expensive, but the more expensive ones will just give you better results. And that is definitely worth it if that's the type of photography that you're looking to create. But where things don't become so important with gear is when you're talking about things like megapixels in cameras. Does a 24 megapixel camera have a far worse opportunity to make photos than a camera with 40 megapixels? And I would argue probably not. It comes down to things like how the sensor operates. It depends on the technology within the camera. There's so many different variables. And yes, if you're going to be printing massive, you know, massive prints, or if you're going to be using your images for advertising, then absolutely there's going to be, you know, a need for higher megapixels. But if you're just posting on social media or you're just posting on a website portfolio or something similar, then I'm gonna argue that you don't necessarily need 40, 50, 60 megapixels to get good photos. At that resolution, you're just not really gonna be able to tell the difference. Photography skills are practiced and not purchased. And that is the stance that I tend to take with this on a general scale. I think it's far more important to invest in yourself, to give yourself opportunities to go out to practice photography more than the opportunity to buy the latest and greatest gear. Now you can still purchase photography skills in the form of workshops and courses, and even purchasing a holiday or a trip to go somewhere new with your camera is still a perfectly worthwhile investment in your photography skills, in my opinion but you don't necessarily want to you know, pour all of that money into the latest camera. You definitely want to invest that time and that money into doing things that get you out there with your camera in your hand. So for me, I always like to take my camera everywhere with me. I don't necessarily wait for the perfect day, for the perfect conditions, for the perfect time of year to go out and take photos. And whilst those are gonna be the days that give you the best results, and honestly, when those days happen, it's an absolute joy to be out in the field. But you still wanna be going out during times where the weather isn't great. For example, today we went into Snowdonia, it's a blue sky day in May, it was the middle of the afternoon, there was just not great lighting. It just wasn't the perfect time to do photography. But I still went and I still brought the camera and I still tried, I still took the photos. And yes, the photos in this video are by no means groundbreaking or particularly good, but 
it still got me practicing. I was still trying to compose images. I was banking things in my mind for what it would be like if I came back on a different day where conditions were a bit more favorable. And the more and more times that you do that, the better you're gonna be. There's no point in waiting until the perfect morning or evening to go out with the camera to get that golden hour if that's just not necessarily achievable for you. It's much better to go out three times a week in horrible conditions because you're still gonna be able to practice. You're still gonna learn about composition. You're still gonna get used to using your camera and you're gonna know that camera inside and out. And I think that's the key to becoming a good photographer. It's about knowing your equipment. It's about trusting your skill set and your eye for composition so that when all of that comes together and you get the perfect conditions, you're gonna be in the perfect place to take a perfect photo. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. It's one that has been going on for as long as photography forums and you know social media platforms have been around. So there's definitely loads of opinions on this and I by no means think that I am right. And I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments. Do you think photography skills can be purchased? Do you think the practice element is better or do you think it's kind of somewhere in the middle? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, do consider hitting that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified of when new videos go live. New videos will be out every Thursday at around about 5 p.m. UK time. And if you're interested in photography and becoming a better photographer, then I would love to see you in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Go outside, take photos, and I'll see you all next week.